What's going on guys? Jake here again and today I have something that I've been planning to do for a while. I just haven't had a ton of time with work and some other stuff going on. So today we actually are going to do some Windows 7 versus Windows 10 gaming performance. And of course if you guys have upgraded from 7 or 8 or 8.1 to 10 and you're a gamer you might notice some differences between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 with the Windows 10 release. Now Today, of course, behind me, you guys can see the typical standard build that I have. Some of you guys may recognize it, some of you may not. Uh, the build is an i7-4790K with two EVGA GTX 970s hooked up in SLI. A very standard build nowadays, not exactly for just a strict 1080p gamer. Of course, Zeus is going to be joining us today in this video like he always does. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump to the intro, and then we'll see how these benchmarks perform from Windows 10 and Windows 7. Alrighty guys, so the first benchmark I decided to start with, of course, is going to be Crisis 3. Now, here we are, and we do have it at 1080, of course. SMAA is low, the texture resolution is high, and we have it on a custom system spec right now, VSync off, of course. All of the advanced settings are very high, and isotropic filtering is 16x, motion blur is off, and lens flares is, of course, on. Now, in Windows 7 for Crisis 3, we were seeing a minimum of 77.8, an average of 84.3, and a maximum of 93.1. Now here's the kicker, as you guys can see in the bottom left corner of this footage, we have an FPS counter and this is Windows 10. The minimum we see here is 110 FPS right about now coming up, an average of 132 and a maximum of 148 FPS, oh my god. Wow, and we'll go ahead and go into The Witcher 3. Now, for Windows 7, we got a minimum of 65.0. The Witcher 3 wasn't very well optimized for quite a while. Now, the average of Windows 7 was about 73.6. A max reached about 82.5. And for Windows 7, we did in notice quite a bit of an increase with a minimum of 97, an average of 100. 3.4 and a max of 112.3. Now the next one we're going to go ahead and jump into is Unigen Heavy Benchmark 1.0 with Windows 10 on the right and Windows 7 on the left. For Windows 7 with two SLI GTX 970s, first of all the first thing we got was a score of 3,455, an FPS of 82.6, a minimum of 36.6, and a max of 154.7. Now, with Windows 10, we see quite a big increase with an FPS of 123.4, a score of 5,163, a minimum FPS of 37.2, which the minimum always seems to be very low, and a max of 181.6. So there's definitely a notable difference, even if it only recognizes it as Windows 8 with DirectX 11, there's still quite a noticeable difference there between heaven on Windows 7 and Windows 10. We do have both GPUs open here. One, of course, is different than the other because one has Alpida GDDR5 and the other one has Samsung GDDR5. Now we'll go ahead and jump into Unigen Heaven. Wow, if I could say it right. Now first on the left, of course, we do have the Ultra Preset with a score of 1,750, an FPS of 69.5, a minimum of 32.1, and a max of 129.8. Now I am leaving Cinebench, OpenGL, and Furmark out of this test completely. We're going to go to Fire Strike later. Now Windows 10 on the right is a different story with an FPS of 136.1, a score of 3,420. 28, almost double as the Windows 7 score, a minimum FPS of 34.9, and a max FPS of 256.0. And of course, we still recognize as DX11 with Windows NT 6.2 as the operating system, of course, on that ultra quality preset. 
Now the last one we're going to jump into here is 3D Mark Fire Strike. Of course, now this is one of the most more demanding benchmarks that I've ever run myself. I'm going to go ahead and look at the core clock at 1163 and 1753 for the memory. The core clock on the CPU is 4.97 gigahertz on this test because at that time it was running at 4.6. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and take a look at the score, and this is on the Windows 7 side. Now, the Windows 7 side gets a score of 16,071. Now, let's go ahead and check Windows 10, where we get a score of 16,547. Easily 500 points higher with no overclock whatsoever. As you guys can see, the core clock and the memory clock on the GPUs are still set to the same. The SLI, of course, is on. And the CPU clock is actually currently set to 4.3 gigahertz when this test was run, as I had to lower it to keep the core temperatures down with the voltage that's right there. And if we do, do look down at the operating system, you guys can see that it is 64-bit Windows 10 recognized just perfectly and this is a very valid result and i will include a link in the description down below Alrighty guys, so that pretty much concludes my Windows 7 versus Windows 10 gaming performance video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. By the end of this week, I'm actually going to have a video on what I personally think of Windows 10. And I really like it. It's very futuristic. It does come with a lot of bloatware, so that's something you'll have to remove down the road as soon as you install it. Uh, and there's more to come in, in that video once that's probably out by the end of this week, probably by Friday. So that's going to include a bunch of stuff on what I really think of it. If you guys are looking to upgrade from 7 or 8 or 8.1, of course it is a free upgrade courtesy of Microsoft. And Microsoft does have some stuff to work out. There are some bugs that I've found, and those will be in that video once you guys see that at the end of the week. And that's pretty much it for this video. So once again, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I do have some news. I am with Scale Lab, Scale Lab and Network now, so we're going to go ahead and do some channel optimization tips with that. We just reached 4,800 subscribers, so we are 200 away from another giveaway. Uh, and we're going to see what we can do with Scale Lab to get that up as fast as possible, really get the community going, really get the Twitch and the streaming community up and going again. I'm really excited for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and comment down below if you have any questions. I will have some links in the description to the benchmarks as well as a couple little things just for your pleasure and enjoyment on the channel. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe. Don't forget to, if you have not already, if you're just running across this video, just because you want to see if there's any difference. If you are a Windows 7 gamer or a Windows 8 or 8.1 gamer, I don't really know how the Windows 8.8.1 .8 works entirely well, but if you guys are a gamer and you're looking to upgrade to Windows 10 to get the best performance out of DirectX 12 and your machine that you possibly can, I will include a link down in the description from Microsoft website to download Windows 10. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys at the end of the week. See you next time.